All right, this is another one to my series of my escape room games that I made a few years back. This one here is for my Back to the 80s room that took place at the local high school. Um, this one here I call the cassette tape game. And basically um, what, the, what the background of it is, is that we have these cassette tapes, which are basically just boxes I bought from the local dollar store, wooden boxes. There's five of them. I'll leave the other two there for now. And you put your 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 kind of your clue on the box itself. So these are hidden throughout the room. Some of them are in cabinets, some of them are under things, some of them you need to unlock something else to get into and, uh, and access them. Once you had all five, you bring them over to this table in the center of the room, and it would say here, "Ghetto Blaster, put the songs in order by release." So remember, this is back to the '80s. So we have people like. Madonna. It's not only the singer, it's the song. The Papa Don't Preach, um, Corey Hart, Sunglasses at Night, uh, Michael Jackson, Thriller as well. So to put them in place wouldn't do anything uh, special, right? You don't know if they have it right or wrong, um, but with the technology that's easily built into this, we we're able to do something with that. So so if you want to know, get clues around the room. So if you want to know exactly when Corey Hart's music came out, well, I made a fake gold record for Corey Hart, and at the bottom, I put uh, sunglasses at night. I presented 1984. So that's a clue. So somewhere else in the room, there'd be something else saying that Michael Jackson thriller came out 1982. So once you had the series right, and you had all the cassette tapes, you put them in order along here. So. Oh, Hart goes here, and Madonna, the New Kids on the Block, and Paula Abdul. Once you had all these in, and only when you had them in the right order, certain lights would light up on these notes on the bottom of the uh, of the board. Each one has an LED light behind it, but the ones that that don't have anything to do with the puzzle, they don't light up. They're just there to, so you can feel them. So in case somebody tries to guess that there's something behind them. So basically when you have them in the correct order, three lights will light up at the bottom and that will correspond to somebody else in the room. Now, unfortunately I took this one out of storage, been in storage for the past year and a half. And even after changing the batteries, um, I just had to look at some other technical issues, but it worked great for the full three months we had it at the school. No problem at all, they light up fine. So if, if someone were to switch these around, nothing would happen, the lights would not light up at all. You have to have them in that specific order. So I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, how does wooden boxes know they're in the right slots? Well, that's easy. So I bought some lights, Christmas lights at the dollar store. I put the battery pack back here. I put the lights through here and I had the return wire come through here. But what you can't see is what's built in and it's very easily built in. It's nothing too complicated. I got some magnets, the biggest magnets I could find at the dollar store or Walmart, and I put them in different corners of the boxes. So one magnet will be here, this box. On the next box, the magnet will be on this side. Next box, it'll be in the middle. Next box, it'll be on this side. And the reason we have magnets in different places, first of all, if you get them wrong, the magnets won't line up to what's under the board. And I'll explain that to you in a second. So. I was trying to find a way that when the magnet, the wire comes through the board, of course, and as it comes through here, let's say the magnet, I need something to happen right here, for example. I was trying to find a way to have like maybe two washers that are close to each other or two metal pieces that have a washer that goes up and touches it on the bottom, but it was very complicated. It would only work maybe 20% of the time. And I was like, I need something that would just have the wires touch when the magnets come up. I looked online and good enough, I found something called a magnetic reed. And it's basically just a, a circuit, little um, tube that has two pieces of metal in, in this tube. They're almost touching, they're not quite touching. So if you were to put that in your board, as your wire comes through, one wire comes here, the other wire leads off. When you put this magnet on top of that magnetic reed, it completes that circuit for that one 
cassette tape. The trick is now on the next board, I'll have to put the magnetic reed on that side. And farther down, I'll put the magnetic reed in the middle. So the wire is going to be coming kind of cross crossways to make sure it goes to the reed at that particular corner. So if somebody puts in the Corey Hart tape on this side here, the magnet for Corey's on that side, it's not going to activate. You would have to really, you wouldn't even be able to do this one here because the magnet wouldn't go around, like, it wouldn't even work. So only when all the cassette tapes are in the exact place, exact place, then three of the notes down here light up. And again, that doesn't mean anything for anybody until someone says, I've seen those notes before. I had this here hidden music book in one of the cabinets. And they look through and they look through and they're like, oh, the last page. The last page has the same music notes. I, I taped this page in there. And you can see if this one here lights up, it's a three. If this one here lights up, it's a two. And if that one here lights up, it's a five. So whatever lights up in the bottom, and only three of them will ever light up. The only three are programmed to light up. The rest are just dummy notes. Then that will work uh, fine right there. And I'm just noticing now that the notes are actually lighting up. I did change the batteries and they must be still weak batteries, but this note here is lighting up. Um, this one here and that one there. So this is still working. I'm glad that after all these years in storage that uh, there's nothing wrong with the circuitry. It's just my batteries were low and uh, working good other than that. So anyway, you have to create some different posters around the room, uh, almost like movie posters or, or song concert posters for Madonna, you know, having a concert on in 1986 and New Kids on the Box and have a concert in 1988 and you know, hide them in different places so they can get that reference. Cause a lot of the younger kids, of course, won't get when Madonna came in comparison to sunglasses at night, that, that type of thing. We're finding at the high school, it's mostly the, uh, the 30 to 40 year old um, couples coming in to play our game. So it's not so bad, they, they're familiar with them. But for those who are not, you need to give them a little hint. And then um, you just have to wire this through. It does take a while just to get you know, everything set up. But now that I've given you the clue of the magnetic reeds, you can buy them on Amazon uh, or whatnot. And they're pretty cheap. I think mine came from China, it took a bit longer to come from China. Um, and then once you have it wired back to your batteries, through your lights, and back again, it's very easy. The magnet touches that corner, or this corner, or that corner, and that'll complete the circuit, and uh, that'll finish it for you. All right, good luck, guys.